International Framework. In this session, we will talk about the International Framework on Biosafety. Number of protocols are available regarding the International Framework on Biosafety, but in this session, our main emphasis will be on two protocols dealing with genetically modified organisms. One is Cartagena Protocol and the second one is Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Supplementary Protocol. So let's discuss them one by one. First, let's look at the detail of Cartagena Protocol that was adopted on 2000 but was fully effective in 2003. It provides international regulatory framework regarding biotechnology industry dealing with the genetically modified organisms. According to Cartagena Protocol, there is no difference between living modified organisms and genetically modified organisms. They have defined living modified organisms as the organisms produced through novel combination of genetic materials by the use of biotechnological applications. These can be modern biotechnological applications such as in vitro nucleic acid isolation or it can be fusion of cells. Now 166 parties are involved in Cartagena protocol but keep in mind that United States of America is not a party of Cartagena protocol. But as we have studied in Pakistan National Biosafety Rule 2005, Pakistan is following number of articles of Cartagena Protocol. Because it promotes biosafety on the use of genetically modified organisms, even on the movement, transit and handling or the use of genetically modified organisms. Now, Biosafety Clearinghouse is an important component of Cartagena Protocol. According to this Biosafety Clearinghouse, there is proper establishment, development and implementation of procedures. So, how these procedures are implemented? This is actually through the exchange of information between the parties. They not only talk about the procedures but also they talk about the capacity building, financial mechanisms, compliance methods and also bring about the awareness programs among the trainers, public and even among the biologists and researchers. The main goal of Cartagena Protocol is the advanced informed agreement dealing with the living modified organism. We can move or transfer living modified organism from one place to another. Either these are the direct foods, stuff, it can be food additives or it can be in the form of feed or any other processing agent. Then it also deals with the handling or use of living modified organism that how they should be handled to introduce new microbiological practices in the labs, then there must be a triple packaging system for category B, that is for the infectious agents. They also deal with the transport of living modified organisms by following the transport uh, biosecurity component. The second protocol on which I will emphasize is the Nagoya Kuala Lumpur supplementary protocol. It also addresses genetically modified organisms that causes damage to the biodiversity. That it deals with the diversity among microorganisms and damage can be at the level of conservation of the nature or it can be on the use of the nature by human beings. Now we have to look at the changes according to these protocols. They look whether these changes are short term or long term. They also look that whether these changes are temporary or permanent. If the changes are permanent or long term, they inform high authorities to take special attention on them. 
Now, Nagoya Kuala Lumpur Protocol, they actually helps in the conservation of nature, that is of the environment. They helps in the sustainable use of the environment and the risk factors affecting the human health. Agar nature ki conservation se related koi damage ho ya uh, improper use nature ka ho raha ho jiski wajay se nature uh, balance mein nahi rahi then we have to resolve these problems by following the domestic laws.